for me, Louis, can you do me one favor, please? Uh, I don't know how to keep track of it. I'm working off my iPad. I don't want to wait to the end to do questions. If there's a question, pop it up during or just like unmute yourself. So uh, that way we can kind of roll through this thing. But I'm not a college professor. I just want to just talk ball. So, uh, you know, some stuff is the same. Obviously, I've heard some good stuff this morning. I know Flu had some RPOs on. Uh, I know uh, Kyle went through the run game. No, obviously, uh, some of you guys hit the pass game. I caught a little bit of Taylor's red zone. Coach Springer, appreciate you helping me get set up in here. But, uh, you know, so I, my focus is supposed to be uh, more RPO action. So I'll move out of the screen in just a second and uh, start rolling this thing so we can keep going because I think uh, AJ's still up next, if I recall. So uh, uh, with that being said, um, you know, just uh, it's allergy season, fellas. So hopefully everybody can hear me. So I, I, I hope I don't get whatever else is rolling out there in the world. But, uh, uh, man, allergies suck. So, uh, so I got a little something, something with me. I'll try to talk through this thing as best I can. So forgive me if I pause uh, for just a second. But uh, basically just talking QB run game, RPOs, uh, you know, again, standard stuff. I'll try to get drilled down as much as we need to. Like I said, I can't see Louie if, if somebody's raising a hand. I got my laptop open too. But just like I said, if somebody just has a question, just throw it out there. I'll, I'll roll through. But uh, I, I heard um, Flu hit this earlier. And basically everybody, and Kenny, I'm sure you guys are doing something pretty similar, may call it something different. You know, I, I don't know, but the word obviously we use here a lot uh, is conflict, you know, with the quarterbacks. And that's what we try to get the cubes to understand. And basically for us, uh, we break it down, try to make it easier for these guys, teach them in three different ways. Uh, so again, they're looking at leverage. Uh, how can we outflank the defense? Uh, every defense in my mind, uh, doesn't matter what level, high school, Pee Wee, uh, NFL, college, uh, unless they're playing with 12, like they do in Canada, there's a fucking stress point. And forgive me, so if you got kids around, this is when you want to mute for the next hour. Uh, but there's a stress point to every defense, okay? And our job as play callers is to try to figure out where those stress points are based on uh, run fits, based on coverage, uh, split safety, post safety, as Noel talked about earlier in the past game. Uh, you can also figure that out in the run RPO game. Okay. And if we can outflank or out leverage the defense in any given way, whether that means if they're even front and there's a split safety, so generally that means you're getting one overhang, correct, Vince? Okay. Uh, or if they're post safety and you're probably getting two overhangs, if it's two by two, three by one stresses them a little more. Okay. So, but we've got to figure that out. And if we can get the ball out to the edge as quick as we can and in the hands of our playmakers, shit, man, why wouldn't we do that every play? That makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, a little less red zone scheme to carry, <laughs> a little less third down, because that means it's first and normal down in distances the majority of the time, and the chains are moving that way versus having to go down the list and stop and look through some tricks. Okay, so so that's some of that. Um, I think while well, we do a great job up here, and, and obviously Noel, uh, you know, that's where everything starts as far as his mind thinking of play caller. Second thing else, pre-snap read, obviously, like we just talked about. Uh, post safety, you know, split safety, post safety, whatever you want to say. Uh, uh, one or two high, whatever you want to call it. Those are things that we talk about as far as being able to figure out what the box count should be. Um, you know, so that way, as we're going through uh, with the cubes, they can identify these things early, some early thoughts uh, based on what our run game uh, that's going to be tagged with the RPO is. We try to keep it real simple. Uh, but again, with that pre-snap, post-snap read, he should be able to know now if it's one safety, well, my box is probably going to be a little heavier. Okay, especially, like I said, in balance sets, right? Do the math. There's only 11 on the field, okay? So post-snap, post, or post snap, uh, now going to depend on defender movement. As we all know, uh, these smart guys nowadays on defense, Vince is sitting over there taking notes, okay? But right now, those guys are all trying to hide and disguise based on everything that every speaker previous to me has just said, okay? And obviously, what I say and whoever else is next says, He's going to be trying to have a plan for that because that's what the hell they get paid for. Okay, so they're going to try to disguise and try not to show us what the defender movement is, but we also, as offensive guys, hopefully they're smart enough, we study enough film, look for their tails. Okay, so, uh, and uh, Kenny, you're going to have to close your ears because I, I may have to take a quick recruiting call. Uh, so just, uh, I'm going to say hello real quick, and then I'm getting back to ball. Okay, so, but just know that's how we talk, uh, talk to our quarterbacks about uh, this is a QB-driven offense, uh, and again, you know, perfect world. We talk about two, three, four choices uh, on every snap, okay? And obviously, but again, in the 
in a perfect world, we're still running the same play, fellas. I mean, we're, we're, we're freaking, you know, not, uh, you know, invent, reinventing the wheel, uh, but we're just trying to give it a different appearance. Okay, so that's basically what we're trying to do with our offense. KB, real quick, I got to say hello. I got a bunch of ball coaches here, man. I'm, I'm in the team room coaching up. So, uh, hey, man, just want to say hello. All right, man. I'll see you later. Talk to you later. Bear down. Uh, sorry, I'm back to work doing multitasking over here, Kenny Gillingham. All right, so again, the levels we talk about attacking, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Okay, you guys all know how to throw bubble screens, swing screens, now screens, uh, whatever you want to freaking call it. Okay, so I, I, but just so you understand the mentality of how we teach the quarterbacks, the cubes, it's just so they can understand which parts of the defense, which parts of the field. And again, like I said, how can we stress these guys out? Okay, especially the over overhand guys. For the most part, I always laugh. Our line coach, Coach Van, gets pissed at me when I say this, but it's true. I mean, I don't know. Kenny's on here. Uh, uh, Flu's on here. I mean, there's some other guys way smarter than me. Taylor just got off. I mean, uh, again, guys, you know, you all know, for the most part, the core never fucking changes hardly. I mean, either they're three down, four down, or bare, right, for the most part. <laughs> okay, unless you're in some kind of unbalanced triple wing formation, you know, for the most part, you can pretty much get a 75 to 85% uh, beat on what the heck they're doing inside the core, okay? How we adjust them and stress them out is what we do with these guys, okay? And that's where we try to figure out where those conflict players are and how we can stress them either with normal or wide alignments or even compressing the set and get into a tight or bunch type of line, okay? We can do all those things. Okay, but our levels of attack are behind the line of scrimmage is the first level throws, uh, like I said. But this is where the, the, the real meat on the bone is right here, in my opinion, is the second level. And that's probably where I'm going to spend most of the time today since we only got like 50 minutes or whatever time's left. Okay, so, and again, like I said, please hop in if there's any questions, though, so I, because otherwise I'll start rambling and, and, and just keep rolling. Okay, but we're going to talk about more some second level things we do here that are pretty simple, I think. And, uh, again, have been very good for us uh, as far as moving the chains and uh, complementing what we do offensively up front and on the perimeter. Uh, and third level is that area of the field, usually oh, 10 yards plus. Uh, you know, you're talking about attacking more safeties. Uh, you're talking about, uh, you know, possibly that, that I always call that area, uh, that fine line <laughs> of where uh, crazy, and you know, insane kind of meets each other where you're trying to figure out now, is this an RPO or is this a true play action? Because again, uh, you're trying to push the ball down the field beyond 10 yards, uh, there's a lot of moving parts, okay? And obviously that means these guys up front are getting stressed out because as I heard somebody talking earlier, uh, it might've been uh, Kyle or Noel or somebody I, I caught, you know, when you're talking inside zone or pin pull scheme or whatever scheme you've got married to your RPO front, these guys are now starting to get down the field a little bit okay so you got to have a plan for that okay you also got to have a plan for these guys like Vince that are going to personnel his front guys and now you may have a war daddy on one of these edges that again may be coming off the field up the field heavy and getting into your cube's face okay especially if he's six five with a wingspan of about 88 and your quarterback's about 5 11 okay that can cause a little bit of a problem so we got to always have plans for that especially when you're talking about attacking the third level field but again some of that goes with the first and second or excuse me the second level too as well so there's a little bit of carryover. Uh, now, I showed this earlier when we were messing around in here. Uh, I don't know who can see this uh, because this does not show up very well on my screen. I, I assume y'all can't see it very well. But this is just kind of a sample of just some of the things that we do uh, as far as uh, first-level tax. And, again, basically just if you guys can't see the drawings, it's just uh, different variations of now screen, whether it be to the outside receiver, inside receiver, or if we've got somebody coming out of the backfield, whether it be line them up in the backfield, motion across the formation, whatever. Okay, so there's all sorts of ways uh, you can put lipstick on that pig, but at the end of the fucking day, it's going to be a pig. Okay, so, uh, but that's just, you know, kind of telling you what this is. And like I said, uh, you know, for just for the screenshot, so since you couldn't see the drawing, again, just simple things is now screens as far as, like I said, you know, this was a look. Uh, I think this may be in a, you just kind of look at the screen, been a while since so I got to talk a little ball. Uh, we married this up. We knew again, stress point wise, what we we're getting from the front guys. Uh, and so that week we said, we want to try to widen our splits a little bit, get these guys out there to make them make a decision. Either they're going to defend the box or they're going to defend the fucking athletes out here. One of the two can't do both bits. Okay. So 
we decided right here, we're gonna to try to get them stressed out a little bit and get some space. Well, they kept numbers in the box. We knew now we can just get the ball out quick on just a simple little now screen and let our athlete make a play, hopefully, and again. Sometimes it's only worth a couple yards, but again, just baiting them every now and again. You do that a few times, you pop one of these, well, guess what happens? Now this Sam Mike linebacker, he starts to adjust and get a little wider. Now you can come back and hit him on the inside on the counter or the, the zone or whatever play you got up front, okay? But again, like I said, this is not where I wanted to start, but that's just to give you guys a little bit of a sample or where I want to spend more of the time. Okay, so uh, this one is where I really want to go is now here to the second level. So like I said, you guys can come up with every, every little ways you do uh, your first level RPOs. Obviously, we have counters off of them. You know, we throw the, the uh, pumping goals. We throw all that stuff, just like everybody else does on on this call probably okay so but at the same time i don't know about you carlos carlos is down in mexico somewhere watching i think he's still on here so maybe maybe there's 12 on the field there i don't know had not hadn't been down there either okay so but uh but we were playing here for us this is really like i said where it gets a little bit more exciting uh it gets a little bit more fun because now you can use these some of these ideas as a play caller not just in first and ten uh type situations uh there's some overlap now Maybe now, as Kenny knows, you know, you get into that situation where now, uh, you know, you need to run the ball because maybe you're late in the game, you're trying to protect the lead, but you also need to convert the first down. And now you're coming up on now it's maybe a third and three situation, okay, where a good safe call instead of throwing a quick game pass that could get batted down, intercepted, maybe incomplete, okay, versus now you've now got a nice easy RPO tag that gives you the best of both worlds with easy, whatever you protected on the inside with run game, okay, you can still get yourself in a, a first and uh, 10 situation by converting, by running it, okay, or taking your gifts, okay, or your, your yes, no's, as some people like to call it on the outside, or working some sort of concept on the, uh, on the backside of the plate too as well to put someone in conflict as, uh, uh, as we talked about a little bit earlier, okay. So just like I said, so one of the easiest ones, obviously everybody does, uh, and again, doesn't matter the scheme. Uh, inside zone is obviously, I think Kyle I told y'all at Arizona is where we start, uh, but obviously we've got different variations as you'll see as this thing goes. But we can just tag it with a simple little key screen uh, out here. We still give them a gift. Uh, and I think Taylor may have hit a little bit, touched on that a little bit earlier. I, I, again, we were trying to get set up, so I didn't hear everything he said. Uh, but again, for the cube, like I said earlier, talking about the windows, can we outflank the defense? As you saw just a second ago on the simple now screen, uh, yes, no. Okay, make that call. Uh, also, pre-snap. Okay, does, does he like, as Noel talked about earlier, do we have easy free access to be able to bank something out here because maybe now they're in a split safety look. Uh, it's a four down front or it could be odd, whatever the case may be. The uh, backer's now pushed because he wants to minus and try to take any screen game you got away. So now you got either a light box or possibly no cover down because, again, you still got to have enough people to defend the front side of the formation too as well. Maybe now you can throw a nice easy gift. Maybe you like the matchup. I think I heard uh, Noel talking about that earlier too as well. Maybe that's your best receiver. Uh, he's 6'4 versus a corner. That's 5'9". Hmm, sounds pretty good to me. Well, maybe I'll be thinking about that too. Again, whatever we can do to convert the chain, move the chains, that's what the fuck we want the cube to be thinking about. Okay, so so we've got some different options for him there. Or again, still if the box counts light, he likes the numbers. Uh, again, you can still get hopefully three yards, as they say, in a cloud of dust uh, by simply handing the ball off. So again, so just a couple of quick looks, uh, just so you get some ball out of this stuff too as well. Like I said, please feel free to drop, uh, just drop in and, and say something if you want. Uh, but again, here's that little stick concept we just talked about a second ago as well. So right now, again, as the cube is kind of sitting out there ideeing this thing, and this was a true freshman for us this year. This is Gennell, which I think I heard his name mentioned, I believe, a few times. Uh, this might have been his first collegiate start, now I think about it. Uh, you know, UCLA, Paul and those guys, our new D.C. came out. And, you know, they're going to play uh, off and soft to the field, but they spun down from a too high look, obviously, to a post-safety look. Uh, but again, over here, I mean, even though they're in an odd front, Okay, we got a one-on-one -on -one situation with one of our best receivers against possibly their best corner, but he's often a little bit soft. So, again, we can make a decision. Yes, no, do we like that pre-snap? We do have what I call an FFP, a free fucking player that can decide to either, as Vince would say, um, come up the field and smoke it and play his run gap fits. Okay, or, again, they can slant this thing and drop him off just as easy. We can't control it. He's free to do whatever the hell he wants to do. 
Okay, so right now as a cube pre-snap, eh, I'm probably kind of going, yes, 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 no. Okay, because right now his hand's not in the ground. He's postured right now in a position where he can rush the field, but we don't know that. His ears aren't necessarily pinned back. And that comes with film study, you know, trying to find out when these guys are dropping. Maybe it's a situational thing. I don't know. Okay, you know, we're just talking just normal down a distance type scheme right now. But, but those are things as a cube, you know, we got to be thinking about pre-snap as we're still ID in the field, figuring out what's going on on the back. Okay, so again, like I said, we think right now pre-snap, eh, not great, so fuck it. Why, why waste time? Okay, so now he can knows right now the box is handled. We got five right here, okay, right here to block these five. Okay, so this now becomes this Mike Will slash back, whatever you want to call him in your terminology, uh, that's out here in the, in the hang position, I call it. Uh, he now becomes his conflict based on what scheme we got. It looks like we just run inside zone. Uh, right here, just running regular zone. You're not even folding or anything backside. Heard somebody talking about four eyes earlier. So now he can make a decision. You know, what is he like? You know, they come down, they're playing a soft off cover one. Uh, you know, he can still hand this thing off. We've got everybody blocked. So right now, if we look at it from behind, again, from his vantage point, you know, he's thinking right now the five, the four eye, actually a five, is it a tight five? He stays outside, okay? The guards really got nobody to work to. I'm sure Kyle went through some of that earlier in the whole line play. But he's engaged, so right now his read key is, is blocked. So, hell, when in doubt, shit, we got hats on everybody. Hell, just hand the freaking ball on. You know, let him go make freaking three yards plus. Now, again, you go from third down to three where everybody's little, little sphincters are tight to now first and ten. And Kenny's feeling good about himself because right now they're, they're, they've got a first down, and now they can make a decision to either run out the clock or, you know, get in victory formation. Sounds like a win-win to me. Okay, same thing again. Uh, you know, again, versus an even front this time. Same thing. You know, we've got a real plus look here with the secondary. They tried to balance up the box force right here. Same three-by-one formation. Hope you guys can see it. Safeties are kind of bullshitting. Okay, they're still spinning. But, again, they still got to compensate. Three for three. Uh, again, we can either work the stick. Excuse me. You can either work his start off yes, no. Okay, off soft coverage. Eh, if he likes the gift, hell, take the gift. Okay, it's up to you. Down and distance, obviously, we're predicated. Uh, we've done some different things in the past uh, with their footwork, uh, even if we need to shorten them up sometimes so they're not always just one of the five-yard hits and these corners sit on it. But you can see right now with a guy with his hand on the ground, generally it's a little bit easier. We know we're pushing to that with zone or, or <coughs> excuse me, uh, counter, whatever scheme we've got up front. Somebody's got a hat in this counter for that guy. So now, now if he wants to take the gift, there's nothing wrong with him just sitting there banging on that guy for getting you three, four yards the easy way. But, again, his call. He doesn't like it. He saw the spin. Safety was off the hash. I don't blame him. He's thinking back was pushed. Sure, why not? Go ahead and take a chance. Now you're either working the concept of the play, which looks like, again, zone read. Again, reading the backside five. Conflict players a little tighter right now. So, again, shit, he wants to hand this thing. If he does, he can hand it off like he does and get us a nice, easy gash for a big play, possibly first down. Or if he does, keep it. Okay, and, again, he can still get this ball off and throw his hitch out here, too, as well because of the off-soft coverage, and these guys have pushed their secondary outside because we split them out a little bit. So here now becomes their stretch player, which is their Sam, okay, in our terminology. That should be forcing the run back inside, helping all this if the cube does get outside. So I'd say that's a pretty good situation right there if the cube does keep this thing. For whatever reason, the five squeezes, shit, we got three blockers for three blockers, and the only guy that can tackle them is a fucking safety that's spinning back at 10 or 12 yards. So, again, we've got answers to help protect the play, okay, based on what we're doing. And, again, for these receivers, they actually now thinking that they got a shot to get the ball. For some reason, Taylor probably said it earlier, but, hell, these guys like blocking more <laughs> whenever they think they can get the ball. Now, I'm not going to tell them they're not going to get it. You know, we hope we shouldn't get it. But, hell, well, we're fucking hand off and doing this all day. Nothing wrong with that. Just keep doing it, especially against that team. <clears throat> yeah, I said it, Vince. Okay, so I'll try to roll through just again so we guys see a couple different things right here. So, again, same thing, again, versus nice four-down type look, a little clean look, even though they got the, uh, the, the uh, five techniques standing up. Again, based on what we're seeing, post-safety look pre-snap, corners up and pressing inside. We can give him something if you like. Again, depending on the situation. You can call it with now, again, you can take his easy hitch. Uh, slant's probably not great right there because the inside left, probably want to get off it. but. You know, if you got something tagged, you want to throw it down the field, uh, some type of, uh, you know, either press beater where he's running a go route. If you like this matchup, you think he's better than the corner you're playing, you can just heave it up, put it on the back hip, throw a back shoulder ball, or let him just read it 
okay? And now it turns into just basically just a, a, a deep pitch route. You know, we've got different options, different variations we can do to be able to take advantage of the single up look right there. And again, like I said, that's the cube's choice, okay? It's dealer's choice out here. Otherwise, as we just saw, it looks like inside zone. Again, same thing, you know, backers are tucked in the box, post safety look, we're thinking probably gonna get, uh, you know, six man box. So numbers probably tell us, eh, runs okay. You know, pin is on the situation again. You know, what we're trying to do in the game plan. Again, that's what Noel does with these guys. He sits down and talks about, you know, what type of call he's gonna make, we're gonna use this. So now he knows, ah, right now, you know, I think this is open field, uh, just uh, normal time in the game, normal down and distance, you know, no, no situational. Shit, if I can hand this thing off and get the ball out in the flat and straight to the stress guys, let's go ahead and do it, okay? You know, let's go ahead and do it. So right here, he's a little bit late because these guys are sitting there playing. They've been bluffing because, again, uh, we did have a guy that, that has been able to pull it down in the past and tuck it. So uh, it kind of puts him in a little bit of a bind, which it does right here too as well. So, uh, again, you know, if you got one of those, that makes it a little bit easier too. <laughs> so I don't know who else has one laying around, but uh, call us. Don't call Kenny. <clears throat> I said that. So, but again, you can see again what that does from the interior. Okay, so like I said, these guys got those five guys, five for five. Okay, big guys are loving it. There's all the drills Kyle just went over earlier. Okay, what you want to do backside? Here's Vince's guys trying to make a decision. Everybody's played zone read now, so it's not like it's something new. Okay, make a decision. You can't play both. You can't be right. But good job by the cube right here, seeing him jump out into a storm lane. Guess what? Safety also gets greedy. Well, if not, they got a problem. Okay, so even if that guy does not run 4-4 four, four all the time, I mean, that's still a positive play. Your, your quarterback that you might think only runs at 4-9 can still get three yards off that play. So to me, it's efficient. Okay, so especially if you start getting four more yards. All right, so again, just hitting a couple of different concepts. Any questions on that? You know, I'm like trying to roll through it again. Everybody runs stick, draw, stick, counter, whatever the case may be, right? I mean, you guys have all, all done most of these. I know it's nothing new. But again, if so, please just pop in. Uh, obviously, the variation off of that, get back to it here real quick, is now, again, this was something we were sitting there watching earlier in the game. Uh, as I think we went through the game, we started noticing these guys now were starting to screw down a little bit more. They're still playing their pro safety look. They were worried about us hitting the run. You just saw the same back uh, hit this run. So now Vince and the defensive guys got smart. They decided they wanted to rotate the safeties back the other way. So as Noel and I and Taylor and Kyle all of us were sitting on the headphones talking, we started noticing rotation working opposite because guess what he's trying to do? His job is to try to fit this box and fit the run because they push the backers out. Again, where's the stress points in the defense? Right now, hell, they masked us up out here. We're pretty good. But the box is like some stress here, so they got to accommodate that somehow. Either trap the corner, cap the corner, or bring a fucking safety down to try to fit and fit this thing when this back pops through because he should right here. So, but good job right here. We saw that. The Cube saw that. I think we talked about it maybe before the series. I'm trying to remember it, or I just can't recall right now, like I said. But we knew he was going to spin down, spin away. So we called it. We freaking tried to run the little lock screen right here. We knew we could get these guys to jump because we hit them on it. But then we just gave them a little pump and go off of it, too, and hit the kid down the scene. They got us back in the game and put us, I think this put us actually up, if I recall. But again, off the same action, nothing real difficult, nothing easy. But now, again, this is like I said earlier, third-level RPOs, second-level RPOs. This is now, as a, as a play caller, and your old line guys got to decide, well, what's it going to take to get this ball off? Is this an RPO, or is this a fucking play-action protection? You guys got to make that call, okay, based on what your personnel is, what your kids can do. That's everywhere. Okay, so obviously right here, we're going to protect this thing because we knew we wanted to buy them some time. Uh, these guys are pretty aggressive up front. We were beat up up front, if I remember right, going into this game. Uh, so we gave him a little bit of time to set his feet, get their eyes down. Their eyes were bad. They're all peeking watching these two cats. Well, guess what? Ball squirts down here. Uh, good guys get six points. Okay, so, and again, even if he didn't make that guy miss right there, okay, you know, still first and ten. Good guys are moving the chains. First downs, touchdowns. That's what we're looking for. First and touchdowns. All right, so, again, let's – find a different little scheme right here going on the, on the outside. Looks like we're running some type of pin pull on the inside. Same thing, nothing changes. Everybody knows the Q still knows he's got the comfort to know right now, again, we've got five hats for five of their hats. Okay, somebody else in here has got to become a conflict guy. Okay, and obviously, again, somebody's got to be a read key. Okay, so again, as we kind of unfolds, and these guys can move around and twist. They got a cross dog here and a little stunt going back here with the overhang kind of just falling back in. Based on the read here, <coughs> excuse me, 
He apologized for us. I was just killing him. Okay, but right now we knew again, still at the end of the day, I mean, it still it just ends up coming down in the man free. Okay, right? So it doesn't matter after, you know, all that shit, not how they line up. I always say it's how they line. Okay, so it still ends up being some variation of odd front, okay, with press man or some type of cover one back behind it, where one of these guys is still free. Somebody's got the back no matter who it is right here. I already banjo it, pass it all off. But again, at the end of the day, the cube knew, okay, his conflict read came. So now, again, he can make a decision based on him coming inside. Let's pull it. And now we just had a nice little slant and a little fade, or no, excuse me, a little flat rock combination going on the outside. We got these two crossed up because they're on the same little, little different levels right here. To be able to open up and it opens up our slant. And like I said, again, Sure. Did it score? No. Did it give us the first down? Yes. Good play. Call it again. Okay. So it doesn't matter if it's the next one or do it a freaking couple more times. And again, the front, doesn't matter what you do with your scheme. We're in two by two right here. But again, it's still pin pull, you know, inside zone, stretch zone, counter. Again, you know, that's that's up to you how fancy uh, you do want to be or don't want to be. But obviously, one of these guys has got to become the in man LOS. One's got to become a conflict player. And based on what the Cube saw right here, he knew that was his conflict based on alignment now. So he got the ball off. He chased it, replaced the backer with the ball. Okay. <laughs> I was telling him for, uh, for receivers and our tight ends and our, our inside receiver room, our job is to make sure we're in the proper space. So, again, sometimes our depths aren't always perfect. You know, we may have to every now and again adjust ourselves based on the level and how aggressive they are or, again, where we are at on the field. But our job is to put the ball where the freaking green grass is because that means nobody on defense is playing there. And that's usually a good thing. Okay, so same thing right here. Again, uh, against a very familiar team. Okay, so right now we just run a little counter with the uh, tight end uh, for the scheme. So, again, Cube knows right now who he's got out here as far as protecting the play to get the play started. So, again, didn't like anything front side versus press. <coughs> But again, guy wins off the line. Shit, good for us. Could have taken it if we need to. But right now, he's thinking based on pre-snap, and not great because it's two on on one out here because we can't control this FFP that's just falling down from the heavens. And now he's becoming the fourth defender strong. So again, could be a problem. Also, again, he knows by the run fit. Okay, it's, that may not be protected all the time because it's an open side formation. Okay, we don't have a tight end in there necessarily protecting the D gap. Okay, but it works itself out because it's counter gap scheme, that's fine. Well, guess what? The other answer is now, again, we also saw the tighter they got, look at his posture, okay? And the cube knew that too. When we were talking about it, and Noel's making these adjustments on the sideline, we start getting the red zone. Well, guess what? Every defensive guy on here besides Vince, okay, get a little bit greedy when they get down here. But, I mean, he's already telling you right now, he is not in coverage, okay? There's nothing about his pre-snap posture that says I am covering and dropping into a zone. Okay, his eyes are now down trying to be a hero and make a big play down here, okay, or, uh, you know, spy on the cue, okay, one of the two. Well, he does that. Well, guess what? We bluff a little freaking little backer block right here, and now guess what? We replace him with the ball, okay? Good guys get on the board. I think we threw that thing like three times, four times that day. I know we scored off it twice because this kid, I think, had two touchdowns that day. And, again, it's nothing that we did on offense. Okay. It was just simply taking advantage of what the heck they were doing. Because technically, they got the play stopped. And it's dead. <laughs> I mean, Vince is probably over there laughing right now with his little notepad. You know, there's three guys outside of the play. Okay. Oh, shit. Guess what? You know, well, good for y'all defense. Well, that's part of the RPO that at least gives you an opportunity to get yourself out of trouble when we do call something that's going to be a little jacked up. Because, again, we can't control the safety. I mean, he started off probably high as you see him walking down and it gets cut off. You know, it probably was a, a true split safety look, cover four look if we were in the open field. But, again, these guys also know field position. Where are they? Guess what? They like to be a little bit aggressive. That's fine. Be aggressive. Okay? That's what we want. Now we could have thrown in either of those two guys. Okay? So, again, he's taking advantage of it. Same game, exact same situation. Uh, and I don't remember if this was the first one or the second time we called it. But it ended up, again, even being more open with the exact same scheme because, again, just watching these guys – as their, uh, 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 you know, game went on and their, their mentality, watching their uh, uh, pre-snap uh, alignment, their stances, uh, I should say, sorry, losing my words. Uh, but, again, we knew they were very aggressive in the red zone. Uh, they were soft in the secondary, so we just came out here just acting like we were blocking this kid. Shit, look at that dust. I mean, again, probably should have freaking threw it right there, but just so you guys see it. So just showing a couple different things. 
that we've hit through it. Uh, again, same thing out here. You know, again, we still still tag the safety valve on the outside of it. We call the same thing in the open field against a different opponent. Uh, similar scheme. It's just a zone split zone C. It looks like this time instead of counter. Uh, but again, same little tag where again we're just trying to get in there, bullshit, act like we're blocking this guy, and then just slip it based on what their rules are. And you can see he could have taken it to the slot. He didn't like that because he saw too many hands inside, so that's fine. So we left a little safety valve out on the outside as a check down to get what I call a GOT throw. Get out of trouble. Get the fucking ball out of his hands. So again, we've got answers for what the heck they're trying to do based on where their alignment is. So again. So I can roll too fast. Louis, is there any questions so I can catch my breath and get a drink here? No questions right now, but if anybody's got any, shoot, shoot away, man. All right. Keep rolling, uh, H. I think you're right. good. Keep going. I think there's probably two people left on this thing. So they're all hopefully having a drink. All right. So let's see. Let me get to uh sorry, get to another one here. Excuse me, guys. Okay, so again. Here we go again. So now, like I said, here's that part of the game where now is, uh, we've got to start to kind of ask ourselves some questions based on what the defense is doing to us, okay, the third-level type RPO, where now, again, we're trying to push the ball down the field a little bit. We're trying to throw this thing tacked on safeties, uh, whether if we want to throw that, that cover four look, throw the glance off the safety, start to fold down and fit the run game, uh, or we just want to take advantage of something and maybe cover one. we got a split safety look. We want to run a little inside fade. <coughs> whatever the case may be, or again, just push the ball down the field, uh, take advantage of our single receiver, like I said a second ago, or a gift type throw. Okay, that's where now as a play caller, you know, I think we just gotta be smart, gotta be creative. Uh, and also sometimes it's dictated by the flow of the game, but you gotta have answers and you gotta have your kids prepared for each situation during the week. So that way now, you know, defense is heavy this week. Uh, maybe they're, they're outmatched up front. Maybe they, uh, they're, they're blitzing a lot more than what the heck we thought initially they've done on uh, on any game plan we've seen. Whatever. You know, we don't know. I mean, that's the best part about uh, about the game that makes it exciting for us, too, as well. You know, but we've got to make sure we have answers. So these are just a couple of things. You know, and again, I'll try to get into as many as I can. I know I'm going to run out of time here pretty soon. Uh, just some RPOs, again, slash play action, uh, trying to push the ball down the field a little bit off of that same inside zone, uh, pin pull. Uh, counter, whatever scheme you want to try to throw in front of it. So, again, just to hit a couple real quick so we can get this thing rolling. Uh, this is um, – and this is, again, uh, I love showing this one because it's kind of funny. Uh, I just remember uh, thinking for events was on the sideline this game, too. This is our first year – or my first year, Vince, too. Uh, but this is against Utah, who was obviously uh, very, very good on defense in the pack uh, for the last couple of years. Uh, but right now, this is probably the shittiest look you could ever see as an offensive coach. <laughs> You know, they now have screwed everybody down. It is press, press, press across the board. Okay, they've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven guys left that's only uh, – that are down here screwed into the box. Zero safety, okay, and this is normal down the distance. I don't know, this is like second down and seven or something crazy, okay. They screwed completely down, and we had a uh, fade, double fade route, mirror fade routes probably inside. We knew we were going to get some cover one. And, again, the cube knew matchup-wise, based on personnel and what we thought we were going to get, who and by formation that week, or even sometimes during the game, making those adjustments. This was a little slot kid that we had. Wasn't very big, uh, and probably 90% of us on the phone right now are called, whatever the hell this is. They Zoom uh, has somebody in our program like that. He's that little uh, Wes Welker type, as I always used to hear, uh, <laughs> that can outrun whoever the safety is, who is not. Okay? And, again, he's got to decide – Q can decide based on what he likes with his matchup. But we knew this cat right here ran 10-4 because he did it in Pac-12 championship. Okay, so and this guy here, well, he, hopefully he runs an 11-1. We'll find out in just a second. But we just kept inside zone on. Okay, the cube also saw they screwed down, got to this cover zero look. So he really didn't have to make too many adjustments. But now we just made a simple little adjustment in the backfield. He knew now the run part of it, eh, you know, <laughs> probably not very good. So this is a no. <laughs> Okay, so this can possibly be a yes, but again, based on his pre-snap uh, number two, the first slide I showed, he didn't necessarily like this matchup with these two guys, or I'm sure this inside slot here versus their safety or nickel player. But as I said earlier, he knew he liked this one. Okay, so now, again, he just makes one simple adjustment and basically just says to back, hey, 
this ball's gone. So we gave him a code word. He just simply said something. Hey, I'm throwing. Okay, so the back knew now I can abort the fake. And usually he'd probably sell a little bit more, but when he saw also zero pressure, he now aborts and steps up. Now we'd like for him to be on the most dangerous, which is the uh, inside of these two right here. But he made a business decision and realized that number six is going to get drafted here uh, next week or two uh, and make a lot of money. So he decided to go for the outside kid. Don't blame him. Smart. He's only 5'5". Five, five. So, uh, so he gets down here. He at least takes one of them. Q smart enough to get the ball off. He knew if we could just get this thing up and outside to him, we can at least get a chance to make a play, and the kid ends up making a play for it. Okay, and again, like I said, to everybody up front, if you're looking at the front guys, they're all, they've got nothing. We did not have to stop and, and walk off to the line and easy, 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 change the protection, change all that. Okay, based on rules by what we were doing, especially with the inside zone, and it's such an easy play because we're basically just covered hats. Okay, they're blocking really inside zone. Okay, and the back now just makes the adjustment. As you can see, he's looking at, hey, hey, guess what? Hey, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Throwing it. Okay, so back now just steps up. Again, if he's got time, he probably would carry the fake a little more. But now he just steps up, takes most danger to two. And now just like that, it turns into really a full slide, which buys him enough time to really just get drifted and get the ball up and out. I heard Noel talking about this a little bit earlier. And now from there, again, we like the matchup. Didn't have time to set his feet, throw a great throw. But, hey, at least it gets the chains moving and we got a chance to freaking make a good play. So now, a week or two later, different quarterback. It was funny, I kind of, when I went through and found some of these old clips, same formation, same exact play, different defense. Uh, their D coordinator came into it a little bit different. Out front still, post, excuse me, split safety look. Well, he was a little worried about these guys, okay? So there's the same two kids on the field. So his plan was that week, which did not work out very well for him, was he now wanted to play coverage because he was worried about us hitting different things, smashes, I don't know what else we were throwing that week. We were throwing some things out here in the, in the flats. So basically he decided that he was going to match up and try to play two over three mixed coverages, you know, in and outs, aisles over all the slot guys and two by two. Well, that's fine. One problem. Uh, again, if you count, though, now they push the freaking strong side wheel or, or whatever, joker, jack back, whatever you guys call it these days, out. Well, guess what? We now – made a push call, we got everybody in the box covered, okay, so now the left of five is a read key, well, guess what, with them worrying about the slots, all secondary eyes are outside, well, that's one-on-one -on -one now at the end, and unfortunately, that kid ended up rushing for, what, 320-something yards that day, broke a freaking record, uh, obviously, D coordinator is a good friend of mine, and he is no longer at Colorado, but at the same time, you know, again, you know, just something they saw a week or two prior, and I can't remember what, how it fit in the schedule, it might have, for sure, at least one game if not two games. But again, didn't have to say anything, didn't have to do anything, still same call, still RPO, zone read with the freaking uh, inside fades going on the outside. But again, now just taking advantage, taking what the defense gave us, and we're able to put us in a su su successful situation to make a play. We can do the same thing again, three by one, same deal. You know, right? You just, the only difference is a three by one, we still like the inside fade, but we just gave this guy a little bit of a, a change up route, and I think we might have been reading it based off leverage that this game or that week. Uh, where now we can slant him or, or bounce him back out. Uh, there's a lot of different things we do with the number three receiver right here. But, again, he can still make his decision. Nothing's changing. You know, it doesn't matter. Just like we saw earlier off the now screen. Yes, no out here pre-snap. Uh, again, it's caught. You know, if he likes to give, take the fucking gift all day long. You know what we got inside the core? Six for five uh, or six for six if you want to include the back or the cube. Okay, eh, it's okay. We'll make it work if we have to. Press, 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 but we like that. But we saw that uh, number two now, <laughs> the fast kid we saw was getting off coverage after we hit him a few times. So now we didn't like necessarily the fade, so he can now either take the hand off or you can see the little slant starting to develop based on his leverage. And, again, he can read it where now he can bat, bounce it with a slant return. Uh, if he's inside left, the pin him in and try to take advantage of this grass. Or if he wants to jump outside, we still got grass if we do decide to, to pull this thing and hand the ball off. And, again, off the same scheme we're doing, Nobody knows anything up front. We're just lined up playing ball, okay? So, again, uh, trying to find a couple of different variations that I haven't got a chance to show you yet. Uh, here's another one, too, as well. Same thing off inside zone. This is two by two. If you guys can't see the screen, that's a true tight end up top. Uh, this time, we're just running like a little curl flat RPO action off of it, too, as well. So, outside number ones, you're going to run 10-yard hitches or curls. Uh, inside two guys, depends if they're attached or unattached to the formation is what, what we're teaching on their tempo. But basically, they're responsible for just running nice, easy flat routes. So now, again, same thing. Based on where we are, we've got the core handle, okay? 
It's two by two this time. So again, the gift necessarily is off, but now we're still looking for who our conflict player is. So we got our rekey, we've got our conflict, and now the best part about two by two, especially against these Florida's teams, is now this weak safety, this boundary safety, well, he's got to shit or get off the pot because he's got a hard job. Okay, this became the rekey because there's our five for a five here in the front. Okay, well, now he's got to make a tough business decision. Okay, either I've got to cover the number two receiver because that's my responsibility and pass, okay, or I've got to go ahead and fit down here into the run, okay, and that's a mofo. I don't know, Vince, maybe you got a better way to teach it. I don't know how to coach it. You know, I ain't coach much defense, but that's a mofo. But look what that does. If I pull him out of the flat, okay, he now again decided he wanted to take his pass responsibility. Well, guess what? There is no one back here now to defend the run. Okay, so, hmm, I don't know. Sounds like a pretty good thought to me. Might want to call that one again. Okay, oh, shit, that's NAU, my bad. Sorry, that was before uh, Flu and those guys got there. They're much better now, I promise you. But, again, like I said, two by two, bounce them up. Again, this is hard because defense is thick, especially, you know, they you know they, 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 they can tee off on you two by two. It gets a little bit tougher. I'm not going to lie, three by one, I love. Okay, I, that's, that's probably a little bit more in my world. It's because it's a play caller in the cube. It's easier for him to see. Okay, but right here again, with what we're doing, holding our action, we know right now, like I said, look at his eyes. I know you guys may not be able to see it, but on my screen, we can see. I mean, he's got to make a tough decision because, again, he's got run fit responsibility, okay, also, but he's also got to take number two, okay, if he goes into the flat. So, and again, like I said, what that does, with just enough time to cube, just with the zone read action, just freezing with the possibility that we can throw this thing, okay, he doesn't know what to do because his eyes are behind all this. Uh, opens up just a nice seam. And no one's back here but the official to try to defend the fucking play. So I'd say that's, a, again, a good, good job for the good guys. Uh, let's see, again, I'll keep rolling. Same type action, same concept. Again, uh, this time, again, this is against Washington State. It looks like this, this, uh, this time, again, now safety decides he's going to spin away. We still got the same fit right here. He's caught up in a hard time because, again, I think this is maybe a week or two after the team we just saw. So now, again, they try to change it where they were going to give him, but do I read the zone? Am I squeezing the zone and try to attack the back? Uh, am I hanging out in the flats because my safety's going to spin away because everything's working to the field? Well, hmm, I don't know. That's tough. But guess what? Now who's got number two? Okay. Hmm. Can't defend them all, like I said. Carlos, maybe down south of the border they play with 12. I know north they do, but down south of Canada, fuck, they don't do it. So there's not enough people to cover them all. And again, not a great play for as far as scoring, not sexy, but efficient. Chains, move, first downs, touchdowns, first downs, touchdowns. That's what they're thinking. That's what our guys are thinking. That's what they like. That's when we start getting that confidence, that momentum. I mean, look at the kid. He doesn't know what to do. Got a hand on him. Do I check him? Do I stop him? Uh, shit, do I cover him? Uh, quarterback coming at me? Oh, shit. Okay, guess what? We have a little bit better tight end or better tight end coach, uh, which is me. Uh, shit, we might have scored. <laughs> okay. So maybe that'll, that'll freaking change. So again, just to get trying to show a couple different things off of that. Like I said, same team, same game, same deal. Just run a nice little easy curl flat concept. But look at that does again, in two by two. These guys all just going through their rules. If you watch them as a defense, if it's shit, you can get on here and coach them up too. Shit. I mean, right now, I mean, every defense I know of is generally gaps out. Okay, and if they're going by what their coaches are telling them, they are literally in every gap. Okay, just filling their gaps and trying to make a play. He's trying to do the same thing his coach is telling him to do. So by rule, either he's a freaking helping out spilling the, 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 the spill player here in the B-gap when these guys start spilling, okay, or maybe possibly C, hey, I don't know. Shit, I don't coach that. Okay, but he's also got number two. Okay, if he releases vertical and obviously release him to the flat, which put him in a real bind. Well, guess what? Again, no one here defending this area of the field. So guess what? Now you can take our little bitty 5'5 five, five guy and put him, uh, hopefully get the check here pretty soon. Uh, let me find uh, – Couple other things. Any questions at all? I'll uh, move to a couple other things. Just want to show real quick. Louis, am I still good? Keep rolling. Can you hear me, Lou? Am I good? Am I still on? Yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll keep rolling. Uh, be here. One or two more things. Easy again, off that same type of action. I showed this to Louis the other day. Uh, again, you know, same thing now, just we uh, took two tight ends and put them off the ball, kind of created a little wing tee type set here. Uh, you know, again, I probably told Louie the other day, I'll never run freaking two tight ends on the ball ever again, ever. 
okay? It's a waste of time. But this shit here gives these guys a little bit of a problem. Same thing. Everybody's screwed down. Box is covered. We're tight, okay? But we got screwed down. Safety stand at seven yards. Uh, probably not even cover four. <laughs> this is true cover zero, okay? So they got hats for everybody. And right now they're thinking about stopping the freaking run. I think the chain said second and five. I know y'all can't see that right here. But again, normal down and distance situation. Again, but going through their rules, well, they got to do. We just run inside zone with a little double arc, double cruise, double whatever fancy terms, you know, clinic talk you want to try to use. But again, by his rules, same thing. You know, he's also got to fit it, but he's also got to respect number two's release. Okay, number two pulls him out. He's out of the way. We end up getting this thing front side. We get a hat fitting on everybody. And now the back is one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And again, I'll take that matchup all day too. You know, obviously safety didn't like making a play on the big back and got us in the end zone. But again, in their mind, all they're seeing is the same thing. Inside talk, inside talk. O-line doesn't even know anything different. He can freaking easily, again, abort the fake if he wants to. But it's just basically inside talk. You know, nothing hard, nothing overcomplicated. And we didn't even block it clean, okay? But we got everybody doing what they're supposed to do. And obviously, we can make a play. So then, obviously, something you can do, we built off of it afterwards. With same type concept, here's the same game. Uh, this is still Washington State. We hit earlier, right? We were sending everybody in the flats the other way. Now we send it to the field this way. And again, by rule, oh, look at this guy. Oh, this defensive guy was really cute. It's third down. I can't see the other down box right here, but I know it's third down. I think it's probably like a 32, 33 call. So, again, defense was gears pinned back. Uh, they knew they were going to come at us. They want to try to make sure to stop us right here, which is what their job is. Okay, good for them. Well, guess what? Hmm, last I checked, we still got to have somebody guard number two. Well, now we ran that double arc scheme. Well, now he's in a bind of the Sam and the overhang because now his two now also has now become a three in his mind and coverage aspect because he's got a new two starting to haul ass at it. So he doesn't know what to do. Well, guess what that does? And now leaves our big slow tight end, wide ass open up the field, and uh, we end up hitting a big playoff that again against a freaking pretty damn good defense that year. But again, in their mind, these guys up front hearing the same thing, same call, same fit, same rules. Doesn't matter what front is, easy, even odd, whatever. Okay, we know right now if these guys got certain gaps. We got to cover up the gaps, and then from there, we know who we're reading. We know who our conflict guys are, and again, let them make their own mistakes. Okay, they can slit their own throat, and they end up doing it right here because we got an over aggressive guy, and we just turn into a nice, easy little pop play. We actually ran the same play in the same game, and we actually screwed it up. We really didn't mean to call it to the boundary, but uh, kind of funny. But same rules ended up applying based on when, again, the defense is being taught by their coach, by their rules. And, again, same thing. Here's a safety. He doesn't know what to do because, by rule, he's got really now it runs from two by two to three by one. So now this guy now is not because he's seeing fast flow. is not number two anymore. He's number three. Okay, so he jumps him. And guess what? We slipped the guy down back there again. You know, you know if he had a better coach, we'd score. I think we'd get caught on this one. So, but again, something real easy. Again, uh, we just built off of the same play that we've been showing that you, again, you could call in any situation, first down, second down, third down, whatever. You know, again, depending on what you're trying to do, but it's just taking advantage of what the defense set to show. Uh, questions, real quick. I'm going to take a pause and, and, and see if there's any questions on that or if there's anything else I'll say maybe. That way uh, there's a little bit of time in between here too. Because uh, I know we're starting to get low on time, probably right, Louis. Uh, yeah. If you guys so, may want, go go ahead and start uh, raising your hand, guys. If you guys got questions at all for Coach H, and obviously, you know, uh, we all do a bunch of the same shit, but different terminology. Like Coach said, it's just putting lipstick on a pig. But you know, if it works for you guys, and, and however you make call things, you know, uh, Coach H will let you in at kind of anything. So ask away, man. Everybody but Kenny. <laughs> I think I think he, he left a long time ago. Nah. Good. Smart man. <laughs> I see, let's see. I, I might just call some guys out. So, Co Co I see Coach Rogers on here over South Point. All right, Coach, you got any questions? I'm going to start calling guys out. Coach Kelly down at Empire, man, ask a question. Coach Bonias, Desert View, shoot. 
make Vince show his screen again so I can see his notepad. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> hey, there he is. <laughs> I don't get to see everybody. <laughs> Who does? Yeah, I got a couple oh, yeah. Lou, you got us on lockdown. We can't talk because you, you, you well you gotta think out you gotta raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand. Yeah. Like, the hell? Hand, dude. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got all the answers. I forgot. Nobody wants right. to ask questions. I agree. I don't know why they're not wasting their time letting me fucking stand up here talk. Hey, that's the way to age. That's the way to show all them good highlights too. Good job. Look <laughs> good, right <laughs> I know a couple more. If you got questions, I'll just keep showing some stuff. So I <laughs> so that was Keep going. Hell, I'll be roast. Talk, don't talk. Tell me when it's – how's that? We'll go that way. Yeah, you got it. You got it, H. All right, cool. Let's just keep rolling it. Uh, this time again, looks like Inside Zone. Uh, imagine that. Uh, again, but uh, we did, this time we built it with the uh, split flow action, but we kept the tight end backside. So, again, right now, like I said, for the cube, pre-snap, up to him. Yes, no, eh, not really liking the matchup, don't like the alignment. We also got a possible FFP down here that can run underneath this thing and take it because of the false look, false keys he's giving right here with an off-soft corner. That's probably going to make us hitch up. So, good decision by the cube. I'm off. Guess what? Again, box is tight now. A little bit worried about the handoff. We can still get it for you because there's always going to be some seams in there. You're never wrong hand a freaking ball off, especially in some of these rundown situations. We know we got to convert. But the, also the good thing is, though, this time we change instead of a slant by one and uh, the little flat route by two, this time we ran the slant by two to try to get the safety on his heels, as you can see, and get him in a pedal right here to loosen this thing up. And we just ran a little check down route on the outside where he can stop and hitch and he can come through late as a little GOT if he needs to. But now we just let the – the, the uh, excuse me, the slot read where the safety is. He's just working off his leverage. He's pushing up the field like he's running a go for about five steps. If he feels he's got head up to inside leverage, he can keep this thing going and just turns back into that little inside fade that we showed uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, if not, if he's got outside leverage or he feels he's stuck to pedal it all outside or he's loose or he thinks he can cross his face, he just plants, sticks his outside foot in the ground, and then right there he just gets what Noel likes to call QB friendly. Okay, where now he can be as flat as he needs to be. So we're not teaching it like it's a slant angle or a pose or perfect pose. We're back in the old days. He's tell you around at that whatever 45 degree angle, which no one knows what the hell that means. You know, to the goal near upright or whatever the case that is. He just got to run the grass, like I said earlier on the little uh, BS play we showed you uh, down in the red zone. So same type thing. Just get QB friendly. Okay, as flat as you need to be so the cube can find you, and now he can put again the ball where the defense ain't. Okay, so again, something real easy off the same scheme, same protection, or we can call this if we need to with the pass pro if we're having problems picking this stuff up, or if we start getting guys in there, get cute, twisting, uh, doing all kinds of crap, trying to pick us off up front. Okay, again, you can just change this thing and call it as a freaking uh, slide protection, max it up. Uh, and again, go. But you can see right here, I mean, that's right now, everybody in the park, uh, they think they're running, uh, they think they're running inside zone. Okay. So again, same thing now, just adjusting the tight end, put him on the other side. So now again, still split flow action, just bringing the, the tight across. Q still has the same decision out there. This time now the nickel player's outside slightly, or at least head up. Okay, so now that slot's got to try to push up the field. I like for him to attack this guy just a little bit more uh, this is our young, uh, young, young receiver here from Tucson. I think this is one of his early games. Okay, and again, you can see he only takes three steps. We like for him to get about five. So now we can really attack this guy, get him on his toes. Okay, and now he just slides and finds himself into the window, wherever that may be. Okay, and again, like I said, something real easy. Doesn't have to change anything for anybody up front. These guys right now, their mind, they think they're blocking run. Okay, so we don't change it at all. Again, our online coach does a really good job with our RPO guys. I understand these front guys know. That's why I said earlier, you start talking second, third level RPOs, okay, we got to make sure we're not stressing these guys out, our own guys. We want to stress these guys out. We're not putting these guys in position to be downfield. Now, uh, since I've been here, I was telling somebody the other day, it was Louis and I were on a call, in three seasons of being here, I mean, I don't remember more than 10, you know, down, lineman downfield calls. You know, that's probably almost 3,000 plays, you know, at least. Okay, so uh, I think that percentage is, is pretty good. 
So, uh, so we felt pretty good about what we were trying to do. And our, our kids get coached up very well to know when they start feeling themselves getting too far down the field uh, what they need to do. But, again, same concept, same thing again. Uh, this time they, we, we knew they came out. They started to play cover two and split the safeties. The nickel wanted to play heavy inside. Our slot was smart, smart enough to know, hey, just push up the field, trust your five steps, go where he ain't. Safety ends up working outside, trying to bracket again. Like I said earlier, we do a bunch of smashes, the inside phase. He thinks he's being cute, taking it away. Well, guess what? This is taking who he's keying right here. He jumps outside. No one's in the middle of the field. Put the ball where the fucking defense ain't. I can't say that enough. <laughs> okay? Do not make this game hard. Put the ball where the defense ain't. Okay? You usually got a chance. They open our guys will catch it. Okay? So, but again, same thing right here. You know, everybody else is blocking inside zone. We're just taking advantage of what the defense is doing. Okay, and again, that's normal distance calls. Uh, here, I think I got one more. Uh, uh, this was this year uh, against, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this this year against, against the Huskies. Um, you know, we knew Jimmy Lake. Same thing we just talked about. We started watching the game. We got to the game. Uh, this wasn't a big call for us, but I think Taylor had this in our red zone package. And we started seeing these guys, especially, like I said, Find the stress points of the defense. For some reason, uh, when we started going three by one, but not three by one to the field, three by one FIB, okay, we noticed that the defense never really adjusted their field safety. Okay, so you'll see him still damn near standing on the hash with fucking one guy out here. Okay, what the hell is that all about? Well, that's fine. Guess what? We also started noticing as we started running some different things uh, up front. Well, guess what? That boundary safety, look what he does. He comes off the hash more. So where the hell do you think this ball should go, Louie? You tell me. This is a question for you, Louie. <laughs> you see it? Yeah, I'm trying to get your boy Stewart on. What, ask me again. I'm sorry. Coach. Uh, where the ball probably end up going? Where do you hope it goes? It, it's going to throw it. You see? Can you see the alignment? Safety oh, off. Man. Safety kill. They plus. Where should the ball go? How about this? I'll just show you. Mm. We plus on the inside. We, we faked a little ISO throw. And we call this one off the sideline, and the fucking kids went crazy when Noel said it. It was, it was actually pretty exciting. They all got real fired up because they knew they'd been saving this play all week. And we actually ran the ISO, and this fucking linebacker just blasted our tight end the first two or three times we ran it. Well, that's fine. Okay? Do what they're being coached to do and use that shit against them. So he comes up aggressively. Well, guess what? Safeties are split. And okay, that means no one's in the middle of the field, just like we just saw. They got a nice, easy little pop pass right across the middle. And as I keep saying, if you had a better fucking coach, we would have scored. So I know I'm getting close on time, Louie, right? Where, where are we at? Yeah, AJ just jumped on right now. So uh, if we ain't got any questions, Coach, you, shit, you're good, man. You, but uh, if, if you, not, it, hopefully y'all enjoy. Coach Stewart is going to rock and roll you. Uh, shoot, beers on Louie. Have a good one. Appreciate you, Coach H, man. Always a good time. Coach Stewart. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I got you. All right, cool. All right, so what do we, we, just, we just pick right back in, pick right back up? Yeah, we're just probably going get, to get rolling here. And, and um, you know, I appreciate you taking the time, Coach. Um, everybody, this is going to be uh, A.J. Stewart, the new running backs coach at the University of Arizona, coming from uh, – Brigham Young University, but can I just hand it off and, and let you roll, Coach, all right, man? Take it away. Okay, cool. Um, can you do me a favor? Let's go, like, how, how long do we speak? An hour or 50 minutes, yeah. something like that? An hour, Coach. Yeah, wh however you uh, want to do it. Can you, can you break me uh, – can you let me know about 15 minutes before the hour? Okay. I want to do 